Like so many Canadian kids, our next guest grew up in a small town dreaming about hockey, not playing it, but dreaming about a career in broadcasting. And he wasn't kidding. Take a look at this. Here he is as a toddler stepping up to the mic. But while Harnar Ryan Singh shared the same hockey fever, there was one difference. He didn't look like the other kids, and none of the announcers looked like him either. Fast forward through broadcasting school and a lot of hard work, and Singh has made history behind the mic for Hockey Night in Canada, Punjabi. He did it one game at a time, which is the title of his inspiring new memoir. And Harnarayan Singh joins us this morning from just outside of Calgary. Good morning to you, sir. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be on. Uh, I, I want to go back to the days of the little yellow mic, the microphone that we saw in the picture. And you knew from the get-go that broadcasting was what you wanted to do. The microphone was a gift from your sister. Talk to me about what you used it for, because it kind of looks like you're belting out a tune there. <laughs> yeah, music has been a big part of my life. Uh, I was pretending to be Ron McLean uh, hosting the NHL awards. I was uh, also pretending to be a person making announcements at the Sikh temple, the Gurdwara as well, that my family attended. So it was used for all sorts of different things, but play by play as well when I would, uh, you know, try to be the voice of the game and call the Stanley Cup final goals. I had my entire imaginary <laughs> hockey team where I was the coach, the GM, would talk <laughs> to the media and just play out as many roles as possible. <laughs> well, as a kid, birthdays are a big deal, celebrating a big deal. Uh, in your household, along with celebrating birthdays, you insisted on celebrating January 26th, not your birthday, but somebody else's. You've got to let Canada know who, whose birthday is January 26th. Yeah, well, my parents were, uh, you know, super gracious to for all my siblings and I. They would celebrate my, our birthdays with a prayer and we would get together. And, uh, you know, on January 26th, it's the great one's birthday, Wayne Gretzky, number 99, <laughs> a person who I continue to be obsessed with. And, you know, he was such a great ambassador uh, for the game. But I, I went to my mom and when I was a kid and said, hey, mom, it's Gretzky's birthday. Can we make Bershad too? And that's the sweet pudding that my mom would make for all of us when we would do the prayer. And so in Brooks, Alberta, uh, you know, here we were for many years doing a, a prayer and making Bershad for Wayne Gretzky's birthday. And, uh, you know, it's so cool because we were learning from the six scriptures about being a humble person and being a good person, giving back. And that's the epitome of what Wayne Gretzky is to the hockey community. He's always given teammates and other people credit. You know, he's breaking Gordie Howe's records and giving him so much respect. And it, it kind of went par part and parcel with what I was learning uh, at the Gordora. Now, you were learning that and your idol embodied that, that humility and that being a good person ethos. Uh, it's not what you experienced every day. You experienced some bullying and you, you're pretty candid about that in the book. Yeah, and it, it's something that my parents and my sister uh, are, have said to me after reading the book now that, you know, why didn't you tell us about this? But uh, it, it's something that it's, it's you reflect on the journey and those were some difficult times and the, the bullying was totally in terms of my appearance uh, and wearing a turban and being a visible minority in a small town uh, where, you know, it was such a, a rarity. And I think previous generations, my parents, when they came here in the 60s, uh, my in-laws as well in the 70s, they, they kind of just took it and didn't stand up for it. And as a kid, I was trying to learn how to be comfortable in my own skin. And hockey was really what broke the ice for me with me and my classmates. But now as we've uh, as I furthered along in my life and we realize what's going on in the world, it's becoming more and more important to talk about bullying, to talk about racism so that we can further this conversation and achieve an end goal where there's less hatred in the world. Look, part of your job uh, is uh, sort of creating a language around hockey in Punjabi because so many of the expressions didn't exist and you came up with a uh, penalty box, which I think is, uh, loosely translates to box of punishment, which I actually think sounds better. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.